I woke up in the middle of the night from freezing water being splashed on my face. For a second, I thought I was just having a nightmare, but when I'd blinked several times and still found myself in a cold, dark dungeon, I began to wish I was back in my dreams. Hey, it's Archer again, and welcome to the thrilling finale of my story. You've got a visitor. You chose the wrong side, buddy. I chose the side that wasn't planning high treason and assassination. Pretty sure I chose right, buddy. No, Archer. You don't understand. The king will plunge our country into chaos. We are the lesser evil here. We're doing the country a favor. Sure, doing us a favor by puppeteering our most influential leaders so you can all have the biggest piece of the capitalist pie. The king, who hasn't shown any ill will towards anyone, is somehow a bigger threat than a secret brotherhood of greedy tycoons. You're gonna regret this, Archer. And don't say I didn't try to warn you. Despite our souring friendship, I didn't want to see Pietro hurt, so I tipped him off. I told him to disappear, to get as far away from the kingdom as possible, because I was about to unmask the cloaked dagger. Morning came and I was taken out of the dungeons. Now, you might be wondering how I ended up there in the first place. The moment I shattered the king's poison tea, I became the prime suspect. They were certain I knew something about the attempt, and they were right. Never mind that I saved the king's life. I was escorted to the king's residence. I thought the worst, and so I prepared myself to never see Luna again. But when the grand doors swung open, confetti, trumpets, and applauding nobles greeted me. The soldiers saluted me, and waiting for me on their thrones were the king, the queen, and the princess. His majesty even went so far as to bow to me. I believe we owe you our thanks and an apology. It's no big deal, your majesty. Just protocol, of course. You had to roll me out as a suspect. Nonsense! You saved your sovereign's life, and we treated you poorly. My honor dictates that I make it worth your while. And so, from this day forward, I declare that as a reward for your services, You are hereby officially betrothed to my only daughter, the Princess Ariana. More confetti fell and everyone in the Grand Hall began to congratulate us. I looked up at the princess who smiled at me and blushed. It seemed like she was pleased with the arrangement. My first thought was of Luna. I said no to marrying the princess, but the king's face changed, and something about his expression told me he was not going to take kindly to being told no twice. Despite my worries, I ended up accepting the princess as my future bride in the end. I provided every piece of evidence that the court needed to take down the cloaked dagger. I even let the king's men into Wika's headquarters so we could all work together for the operation. Pietro had already disappeared, and when the Secret Brotherhood found out about his disappearance, they held another emergency meeting, and that was when we pounced on them. We waited until our tech team were able to pin down the leader's location, and when we'd unmasked his IP and pinpointed where he was, we burst into the old church and apprehended everyone there. The leader was staying at a house I knew well, and that was because it was the home of my rival. Brent was arrested in his cloak as he was trying to leave his mansion's basement. I personally stripped the wolf mask from his face. I finally rescued Luna that day. I entrusted her safety to one of my most loyal Wika operatives, and she was smuggled into the palace, in a secret room next to mine. Brent and his cohorts begged for the king's mercy, but the king showed none. He took everything the members of the Cloaked Dagger owned. He raised their businesses to the ground, and every cent he took from them, he used for his own satisfaction. He even had a massive marble statue built in honor of himself. The entire country feasted for five days and five nights, all paid for by the loot the king had taken from the Cloaked Dagger. I never thought that I would ever believe a word out of Pietro's mouth, but witnessing the king's greed and pride made me suspicious. He was vindictive, and there were flashes of fury that would sometimes come out from under the surface of the calm, happy image he usually projected. 
Was Pietro right? I pushed my doubts aside for the sake of my marriage. I smiled and accepted the king's gifts. A mansion in the palace grounds, an island off the coast of Mallorca, a one-of-a-kind golden car, and a lavish wedding for me and Ariana. I was adored by the people. In the streets, girls and guys alike would scream my name and ask for selfies. Thinking back to where I began, nobody would have been able to tell that I would end up being an actual prince. And the king turned out to be nice. He was always kind to me. He taught me a lot about how it was to rule. He also taught me about random things like how to fish and how to change a tire even. It kind of brought me back to how Joel used to be like a father to me. And I was finally happy to have that kind of figure in my life again. One day, while we were in the gardens, I told him the story of Joel, and out of nowhere, the king went on a long rant. A ruler taking control of his power is like a gardener keeping a keen eye on a garden. The flowers, the fruit trees, the beautiful things are people, and those who oppose you are the pests in the weeds. Like a gardener, you pluck the weeds before they grow too tall and spread. You get rid of the pests before they multiply. That's how you keep your power. His eyes glinted with evil when he talked about getting rid of his enemies, and it scared me. Little did I know, he said all of that as a warning. My popularity was taking off. People were calling for me to be the next king instead of Ariana being queen. And the king took that as an insult. The people loved me more than they loved him. And so he did just as he said. He plucked the weeds. First to go was my wife. He sent her away. Then he disbanded Wika. He didn't want me getting back into power, so he exiled everyone who worked for me to a faraway corner of the kingdom and made them work at a mine. I was put under guard 24-7 in a dungeon under a tower in some unknown forest. I realized that Pietro was right all along. The king had an evil in him. He never wanted his rule to end, and I was afraid he would be prepared to do anything to achieve that, even hurt his own daughter. There was no way for me to escape. I began to accept my exile. I even planted a few shrubs and berries. But then, one night as I was falling asleep, I saw light come down the stairwell. I hid behind my bed, thinking the king had finally decided to get rid of me permanently. But I was not going to let it happen without a fight. The door opened and I jumped out from behind my bed, hands in the air and ready to attack. The cloaked figure lifted the light up to her face and I saw who it was. It's me, my love. I broke down into tears. My wife had come to rescue me. And from behind her, a cloaked woman ran and hugged me. It was Luna. The two women in my life were working together. But how? How did you... No, she's in the secret room next to yours. I've lived in that palace since birth. Did you really think I'd never find out? I kissed them both and thanked them. They led me outside where all the guards were soundly asleep and snoring. It was Ariana's idea. Lavender tea. Who knew? Mom was waiting for us with horses. I hugged her so tight. I hadn't seen her in so many years. We rode the entire night to reach a hidden village. She had been gathering people there ever since she found out that the king himself was corrupt. With me there, the revolution finally began. I became a symbol. I became their leader. I sent messages and letters to every single town. I commanded my supporters to spread the word of what really happened. And the kingdom began to revolt against the king for imprisoning the very same man who saved his life. Just because he was jealous of my growing power. Hundreds of thousands of citizens surrounded the palace, barricading its entrances and preventing anyone from getting in or out. By the 30th day, courtiers and servants were begging to be let out. They had run out of food. The king doubled down and ordered anyone who defects be put in dungeons. None of this worked, though. He not only made enemies outside, but there was growing unrest inside the palace grounds, too. The night before all chaos broke loose, Mom, Ariana, Luna, and I shared dinner together. It was then that I finally learned who my real parents were. Mom confessed that she adopted me for a reason. I was the key. I was the son of the most powerful man in the country. 
The king met my birth mom at a royal ball. She was the daughter of a beloved king. She was about to be crowned queen. And so, ambitious as he was, my dad married my birth mom and had me. He manipulated mom to give him the crown instead. She abdicated and dad manipulated the court into following along with his plan. As soon as that happened, he dropped mom like a hot potato and married Ariana's mom. My birth mom couldn't take the heartbreak and she left me at the orphanage. She was never seen again. You are the true heir to the throne. You are descended from great kings. He is not. The king had men sneak into the war tent while we slept, and the next morning, he stood on the palace walls with Luna in his grasp. Checkmate! I have your queen! And he was right. There was nothing in the world I wouldn't do to keep Luna safe. And I was about to give up everything. Until, from over the hill, I heard a war cry. And when I looked up, I saw a wrecking ball coming down the road. The old members of Wika had brought hundreds of miners with them. All the prisoners that the king had exiled unjustly. The castle walls fell within a minute, and the people stormed in. The king ran to his throne room and barricaded it, but we charged through the doors without effort. He had to be dragged out of his throne as he started crying like a baby and refused to let go of it. Mercy! Mercy, please, my son! You don't get to call me that. And besides, like a gardener, I have to pull out the weeds. I sent my father into exile, just like he did to a lot of people. And finally, the kingdom settled into a peaceful era. I sat on the throne and ruled justly, with Mom, Ariana my queen, and Luna, the love of my life.